Tokyo Ghoul is set in a Japanese alternate universe where in this world exist ghouls, beings that look like ordinary humans, but can only survive by eating human flesh. The ghouls also live among the human population in hiding, concealing their true nature to avoid being hunted by the anti ghoul authorities. Thus, the whole storyline adheres to the hunt or be hunted concept. The story of Tokyo Ghoul begins by showing an ordinary college student named Kaneki Ken, sitting in a cafe with his best friend named Hideyoshi Nagachika, where Kaneki is telling a story about himself falling in love with a woman and planning to ask her out. Not long after that, a purple haired woman with glasses and a seductive body appeared at the same cafe, making Kaneki very fascinated because she was the woman he meant. After seeing the woman's appearance, Hyde thought that Kaneki had no chance with her, so he then left Kaneki. Left alone, Kaneki reads a novel, but he realizes that the woman is also reading the same novel. The woman named Rize Kamishiro was aware of this too, so in the end, Kaneki managed to approach Rize, and the two of them decided to date at the bookstore. On the date, they spent time together discussing while eating at a restaurant. Kaneki seems so excited when talking about their favorite books and authors, while Rize doesn't eat much because she admits that she's on a strict diet. After the date, Rize confessed to Kaneki that she lives near where all the ghoul related crimes have been happening lately, so Rize fearfully asked Kaneki to take her home. Of course, Kaneki agreed to it without a second thought because he had fallen deeper and deeper for Rize. Turning into a dark alley as they approached Rize's house, Kaneki said that he wanted to meet Rize another time because they had the same interests, and everything seemed to be going well since Rize also confessed the same thing. Kaneki blushed when Rize hugged him. However, this is the point where it all started to turn 180 degrees. Kaneki was immediately terrified after Rize bit his shoulder, showing her true nature as a ghoul. Apparently, Rize had been targeting Kaneki from the start not as a partner, but as a meal. While Kaneki fled in terror as his life was in danger, Rize attacked Kaneki with her kagune with such sadistic glee and cornered him at a construction site. After Rize stabs him, Kaneki was in critical condition and almost dies, however, Rize was crushed by a falling steel beam before she can eat him. Due to this incident, Kaneki was taken to the hospital in a state of near death. But unbeknownst to him, Kaneki was able to recover because the doctor had decided to transplant Rize's organs into his body. Kaneki looked fine physically, but what surprised him was that he didn't have the appetite to eat any food, he even threw up the food he really liked before. What's even more strange is that Kaneki actually felt unable to control himself when he saw the crowd of humans in front of him, as if there was a strange feeling inside him that wanted to eat humans. Apparently, Rize's organ transplant has made Kaneki turn into a half ghoul human. Kaneki at first could not accept this fact by trying to stab himself with a knife, only to break the knife, which indirectly confirmed that Kaneki had now become a half ghoul human, marked by only one of his left eyes changing. Kaneki, who is experiencing a mental breakdown then wanders the street while fighting his craving for human flesh. Kaneki chases after a delicious smell that reminds him of his mother's cooking but is horrified to death that the scent is coming from a human corpse being devoured by a ghoul. The ghoul was about to share the food with Kaneki, but he was killed by a ghoul named Nishiki Nishio. Nishiki was angry because he felt that the ghoul and Kaneki had entered his territory without permission and intended to attack Kaneki next before finally his plan was thwarted by the arrival of another ghoul named Toka Kirishima. Toka herself was an employee at the Anteku coffee shop where Kaneki met Rize for the first time, who recognized Kaneki as the person who was with Rize. The fight between Toka and Nishiki ended quickly after he ran away. Kaneki continues to struggle to fight his hunger by emphasizing to himself that he is a human, but Toka, who is bored and annoyed with Kaneki's attitude, finally puts meat in his mouth, before it was spit out by Kaneki because he wanted to maintain his humanity. A few days later, Kaneki returned to school with one eye closed, where he met Hyde who asked him to meet his senior. When they arrived, it turned out that the person Hyde was referring to was Nishiki, so Kaneki decided to accompany Hyde wherever they went so that his friend would not be eaten by him. Kaneki's guess was right because Nishiki suddenly kicked Hyde unconscious and then attacked Kaneki until he was cornered. But when Nishiki was about to eat Hyde, Kaneki surprisingly awakened his kagune for the first time and fatally attacked Nishiki. Because at that time Kaneki had been possessed by his ghoul soul, Kaneki almost ate his own best friend. Luckily, Toka appeared again and stopped the uncontrollable Kaneki. When Kaneki woke up and regained consciousness, he was already in Anteku. It turned out that it was Toka who had brought Kaneki and Hyde to Anteku to rest and heal themselves. Anteku's manager, 
Yoshimura Kuzayan, offered Kaneki to join the Anteku group, which is a sanctuary for ghouls like Kaneki. Apart from that, Anteku also guaranteed food for the ghouls not by killing, but by taking it from dead humans, in exchange for them having to work as employees at Anteku's coffee shop. Kaneki also agreed to this and officially became part of the Anteku group. As days passed, an anti-ghoul squad known as the CCG frequently patrolled and hunted the ghouls in District 20 where Anteku's group was located. The CCG itself stands for the Commission of Counter Ghoul consisting of humans to fight the ghouls. They use a tool called Quinky to deal with the ghouls, where the Quinky itself is made from the Kagune of a ghoul. Therefore, every evening Kaneki is taught self-defense techniques by Yomo Renji, Toka's uncle, so that one day when Kaneki meets CCG, he will be able to put up a fight against the organization. Apart from that, Kaneki also wore a mask covering his face so that CCG would not easily recognize the faces of the ghouls. The mask was made by a ghoul named Uda who also explained the difficult lives of Toka and other ghouls who live in association with humans. One day, Anteku was visited by a strange man with a neat appearance named Sukiyama Shu. At first, Sukiyama only came to stop by, but he immediately acted strangely after seeing Kaneki, where he seemed to sniff Kaneki, making Kaneki feel horrified. But it wasn't long before Sukiyama left, whereupon he at home began to show his true self. It is known that Sukiyama is actually a food lover, and the reason he sniffed Kaneki earlier was that Sukiyama was attracted by the scent of Kaneki as a half ghoul human. A few days had passed since Kaneki's meeting with Sukiyama, and suddenly Kaneki got a letter from Sukiyama that was in Anteku's window. The contents of the letter were that Sukiyama wanted to invite Kaneki to have dinner together at his place, which Kaneki ignored at first. But after learning that Sukiyama was holding a woman named Kimi hostage, Kimi turned out to be Nishiki's girlfriend who knew Nishiki's status as a ghoul and also accepted ghoul's existence as long as they didn't hurt those closest to her. Kaneki intends to come to save Kimi, regardless of what Nishiki previously tried to do to his best friend, Hyde. Sukiyama intends for Kaneki to eat Kimi, while he will eat Kaneki as his ultimate meal. As they fight, Sukiyama overpowers them both, knocking even Nishiki out. When Sukiyama approached Kaneki, that's where Toka came to help Kaneki. Even though his eye is injured, Sukiyama instantly heals and counterattacks so that they are all overwhelmed because Sukiyama is too strong for them. In this situation, Kaneki asked Toka to eat some of the meat, and it was at that moment that Toka's strength recovered so she could continue her fight against Sukiyama. In the end, Sukiyama was defeated, and Kimi was saved. After that incident, Nishiki finally decided to join Anteku. A few days before the Sukiyama incident, a woman named Fueguchi Ryoko and her daughter, Fueguchi Hinami, came to Anteku to ask for protection because recently her husband's place of residence and workplace was unsafe and had become the target of the CCG. While in Anteku, Hinami was always accompanied by Kaneki and Toka and even considered Toka as her own older sister. Meanwhile, after the Sukiyama attack incident on Kaneki, CCG members suddenly came to Ryoko's husband's place, and they were Aman Kataro and Kureo Mato. Without mercy, Mato immediately kills Ryoko's husband in a very vicious manner with his ability. One day, Hinami asked her mother to accompany her to buy a book at a bookstore. But not long after that, Hinami suddenly smelled her father's scent and headed straight for him because she had missed him so much because they hadn't seen each other for a long time. Arriving at the place, it turned out that what was there was not his father, but two men in suits who were none other than Aman and Mato. Hinami was really scared to see them, and so was Ryoko who had just come after her daughter. Understanding the situation, Ryoko immediately told Hinami to run away, so Hinami then ran away to ask for help. Hinami coincidentally meets Kaneki on the way and asks him for help in saving her mother. But when he got there, Kaneki couldn't do anything against the two first-class investigators, especially when he didn't wear a mask to hide his identity from them, which could have endangered the other Anteku members. Kaneki could only cover Hinami's mouth and eyes so that Hinami would not see her mother when she was killed and decapitated right in front of their eyes. Toka, who heard the news about Ryoko's death at the hands of the CCG, immediately looked for the person involved and responsible for Ryoko's death incident. In her search, Toka manages to kill one of the investigators, but suddenly Mado comes and attacks Toka with his quinky. Realizing that she was no match for Mado, who was quite strong, Toka finally ran away. Even though it has been several days since the incident, Hinami is seen still mourning her mother's death. At night, Hinami suddenly smelled a familiar smell, namely the smell of her mother who should have died. 
When Toka entered Hinami's room, it turned out that Hinami had disappeared and was probably chasing the smell of her mother. At that time, Toka asked Kaneki for help, whereupon the two of them immediately split up to find Hinami's whereabouts. Long story short, Toka managed to find Hinami in an underground aqueduct. Hinami is seen carrying a bag, which turns out to contain the body of Hinami's mother, Ryoko. Apparently, it was all a plot between Aman and Mado, who lured Hinami out by taking advantage of her mother's smell, as not long after that Mado appeared and intended to kill Hinami. Toka did not remain still in this situation, where she intended to fight Mado for the second time, even though she knew that Mado's strength was on a different level than hers. Toka is even more cornered because at this time it turns out that Mado uses two different quinkus, which were made from Hinami's mother's and father's kagune. Hinami, who could only cry from the start, finally started to show her strength after she saw her parents' kagune being used to attack Toka. Hinami then awakens her kagune for the first time, it turns out that Hinami has inherited the kagune from both of her parents, a case that is quite rare among ghouls because generally, a ghoul can only have one type of kagune, while Hinami has two types of kagune at once. Unexpectedly, Mado managed to get cornered by Hinami until both of Mado's legs and right hand were severed. Thus, the fight ended with Toka who killed Mado with her own hands so that Hinami wouldn't dirty her own hands. On the other hand, Kaneki is facing Aman, and Kaneki for the second time takes out his kagune to fight Aman who is quite strong. With fierce resistance, Kaneki finally managed to destroy Aman's quinky and left him seriously injured. In this situation, Kaneki told Aman to run away immediately, because at that time he almost lost control of himself, and he didn't want to eat Aman. As expected, after Aman left, Kaneki started to lose control of himself, before he was finally stopped by Yomo. Several weeks have passed since the incident. In Tokyo, there is a ghoul organization called Augiri Tree. Augiri Tree itself is predicted to be the strongest ghoul organization in Tokyo originating from the 11th district because it contains top-level ghouls. At that time, Augiri heard about the chaos that was happening in the 20th district and tried to catch Rize, who was actually from the 11th district, without knowing the fact that Rize was actually dead. Augiri Tree not only slaughtered the CCGs who was their main enemy, but they even slaughtered a small branch of their own group to show their strength. Due to the violence and chaos created by Augiri Tree, CCG plans to attack all ghouls in District 11 in the near future. Meanwhile, one of the ghoul organizations from District 11 led by someone named Banjo Kazuichi came to Anteku to meet Yoshimura. But because Yoshimura was absent at that time, he spoke to Toka and Kaneki. At that time, Banjo ordered Kaneki, whom he judged to have the same scent as Rize, to tell her to run if they met Rize again in the future. Banjo is afraid that something will happen to Rize because right now she is being targeted by Augiri Tree. Not finished with their conversation, suddenly they were surprised by the arrival of a member of Augiri Tree named Ayato Kirishima who is actually Toka's younger brother. Just like Banjo, Ayato also came to find the whereabouts of Rize. There had been a debate between Toka and Ayato at that time. But their debate was stopped by the arrival of Yamori or commonly known as Jason, an executive from Augiri Tree. Just like the two previous people, Jason's arrival was also to find Rize's whereabouts. This is because Jason has a personal grudge against Rize who previously defeated him. Jason didn't know that Rize was actually dead, but he could clearly smell Rize on Kaneki. Because he had hatred for Rize, at that time Jason viciously beat Kaneki many times, smashed him into the table until it broke, and stepped on it very hard, forcing Kaneki to release his strength which was marked by one of his eyes changing. Unfortunately, Jason was too strong for Kaneki, who kept beating him until he was unconscious. Toka tried to stop Jason, but she was stopped by Ayato and then passed out. After that, Jason went with his catch, which was none other than Kaneki, for him to use as a means of revenge against Rize. After Yoshimura returned, they all couldn't accept that Kaneki had been kidnapped and taken to District 11. But with the current chaotic situation, they couldn't come to save Kaneki, moreover, the CCG intended to carry out a massive war with all the ghouls in District 11. Despite the enormous conditions and risks, Toka expressed her desire to go save Kaneki even though she had to come there alone, which was then followed by Nishiki who intended to help Kaneki as thanks for saving Kimi before, and then all Anteku members decided to save Kaneki. Not only Anteku, even Uda who made a mask for him, plus Sukiyama who almost ate Kaneki decided to join Kaneki's rescue operation. Later they would take advantage of the chaos that occurred between CCG and Augiri, 
by disguising themselves as Auguri members so they could sneak in there. Ten days had passed, and CCG had surrounded Auguri's base in District 11. At first, it was quite difficult for CCG to break into Auguri's base, until a young man named Juzo Suzuya managed to break into Auguri's base on a motorcycle, and massacred all the ghouls in the area alone. In this way, CCG was able to break into Auguri's base, while this opportunity was used by Anteku's group to sneak into Auguri's base disguised as Auguri members to find Kaneki's whereabouts. While the war between the CCG and Auguri was going on outside, and Anteku was looking for Kaneki, Kaneki himself was actually being held captive in Jason's room. Apparently, during those ten days, Kaneki was subjected to very severe, cruel, and merciless torture from Jason. Starting from his fingers being cut, his nails removed, and his eyes injected, while Kaneki was forced to keep counting numbers if he didn't want to get more cruel torture, which actually aimed to keep Kaneki from losing consciousness. Kaneki is tortured periodically, given brief rest periods just to regenerate. While enduring the unbearable torment, Kaneki went through several illusions monitored by a manifestation of Rize. During that time, Kaneki recalled his childhood when he saw his mother overworked to the point of death and leaving Kaneki alone. Even though Jason tried to break Kaneki's mind by torturing him to turn him into a ghoul, Jason's efforts still seemed unsuccessful, to the point where he tortured Kaneki by inserting a red-headed Chinese centipede into his ear which gave him unbearable pain. In this position, Kaneki couldn't take it anymore and told Jason to just kill him instead of torturing him like this. However, from his subconscious appeared the figure of Rize who convinced Kaneki not to blame himself for the weakness that made him end up like this. Rize in Kaneki's consciousness tries to make Kaneki accept himself who has now become a ghoul because all this time Kaneki could have actually defeated Jason with his ghoul power, but he tried to hold back his strength so it wouldn't come out because he didn't want to lose control and hurt people around him again, which might make him forget his human side. But because of the cruel reality of this world, where the weak will be oppressed by the strong, and one day what is important to Kaneki will be taken away from him, that's where Kaneki finally accepts the fact that he is a ghoul, and says that he will change this cruel world with his power as a ghoul. Ten days since Kaneki was tortured had passed, which not only changed his personality but also changed his hair color to white. When Jason intended to end Kaneki's life because the CCG was getting closer, it was at that time that Kaneki easily released the chains that bound him for ten full days of torment, and counterattacked Jason by eating him. Thanks to the torture that Kaneki has experienced so far, he felt absolutely no pain when his leg was crushed by Jason, so he can fight at full strength without fear of pain or even death. Here Jason is furious and enters Kakuja mode, which is an advanced level change from Kagune. Even though Jason is very strong, Kaneki is surprisingly stronger than Jason himself after accepting himself as a ghoul. With the fierce battle they fought, Kaneki really succeeded in making Jason helpless, until in the end, he managed to win the battle against Jason. Not satisfied with just defeating him, Kaneki also pinned Jason to the ground with his kagune so he couldn't move, and then started the torture that Jason had done to him until in the end, Kaneki decided to eat Jason to get more strength. With this, Tokyo Ghoul Season 1 ended with Kaneki finally accepting his nature as a ghoul. With Kaneki's dilemma and the rising conflicts between ghouls and humans, the next season will surely be another exciting journey for Kaneki.